Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. Uh, it's another good and a wonderful opportunity that God has given us just to be able to converge uh, in this platform to share His Word. And I just want to welcome you as we as we share. My name is Pastor William, and the God is good. So today um, we get to share God's Word in the uh, in the book of John, chapter fourteen, verse nineteen to twenty four. And the topic of the lesson is sustaining obedience. We're going to look on ways on which we can be able to sustain obedience. Because God has called us to obey Him, to follow Him with a whole heart. Not half heart, but with a whole heart. And that is what we're going to be looking up today. But before we even delve into the study, I want to talk a little bit about some of the events or some of the uh, words that God used when he instructed his people in the Old Testament. And um, it's very interesting that when you study through the Old Testament from the book of Genesis to Malachi, there are some words that the Lord would use when he's instructing his people either to do something or not to do something and you would expect them to obey. And so these are some of the words that uh, I got to find. One, he says, keep my covenant. So when the Lord says, keep my covenant, he's actually asking you to obey that which he's telling you to do. So he, uh, he says, keep my covenant. Another word, he says, keep my commandments. Another one is, keep my laws. He says, keep my ordinances. Keep my statutes. Keep my judgments. Keep my charge. Those are some of the words that interchange with each other throughout the Old Testament. And God would use them to tell his people on what to do and what not to do. And it's very interesting that we would see someone or a group of people, when God is telling them to do something, when they begin walking that journey of, of obedience, and the first uh, time they obey, but as the process continues somewhere along the way, disobedience comes in and then they end up uh, failing to obey what God has told them to do. And of course, disobedience will always come with repercussions. But when I was doing uh, this study, I th there's some words that I was able to pick that are synonymous to the word obedience. And these are compliance, adherence, conformation, conformity, and also keeping. These are words that are synonymous to obedience. So when the Lord is giving you an instruction, he's expecting you to adhere to what he's telling you to do. He's expecting you to keep what he has given you as an instruction. He expects you to comply. He's expecting you to conform to that which he's leading you to do. So we discover when we read um, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 uh, disobedience which is also synonymous to rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft imagine disobedience is equated to witchcraft a sin of witchcraft so it's very paramount that we are able to focus on obedience or rather follow through that path of obedience to the latter that we do not start well and then we end up not doing that which God has called us to do. And it's no wonder Paul would ask uh, uh, people, why is it that you started very well with the Spirit and you're ending with the flesh? So we want us to keep that path. We want to have a, a, a swift journey of obedience from the start to the end. And that is what God is calling us to do. So we are going to look right into the scripture. That is John chapter 14, verse 19 to 14, which is our key uh, portion of scripture that you're going to read today and I'm reading from the New King James Version and this is what the Bible says it says a little while longer and the world will see me no more but you will see me because I live you will live also at that day you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you he who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, 
Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the, but the father's who sent me. So, remember we talked about the words that were used in the Old Testament. Now we cross over to the New Testament. A new word comes in. A new statement actually the Lord uses. He says, now keep my word. Keep my word. Remember we are talking about adherence. We are talking about maintaining. We are talking about sustaining obedience. And so, the Lord is calling us to maintain, to sustain that which he has, uh, he has commanded us to do. And I've had stories of someone who tell you that, you know, maybe they face a challenge and they share with them, they're saying, I had something tell me not to go this direction. I had something in my spirit telling me not to do this thing. And because I, I didn't obey that voice or that thing that told me not to, to, to do that, then that is why I've faced what I'm facing right now. And so, just to clarify, that voice, that thing that tells you that don't do this or don't go that direction is actually the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so God will always minister to us. He will always instruct us. He will always show us or rather lead us on the path that, on which he wants us to follow. But when we come to that place where we don't pay attention, then we end up missing it. And then we don't exactly follow that which he has called us to do. So he's calling us to keep his word. Yes, it is possible to receive his word. It is possible to receive his command. It is possible to receive his direction. But receiving and keeping are two different things. It is a one thing to receive and it's another thing to keep. But we have to be able to receive and keep it at the same time. And that is what the Lord is calling us to do. Many a times people have received God's word. You've received a prophecy. You've received a word from the Lord. You've received an instruction from the Lord. We receive it with an open heart, but now when it comes to keeping it, that, that is where issues begin to crop in. And so we are going to look on ways on which we can be able to do that, to be able to keep God's word or other commands that he gives us. And I just want to draw some examples of uh, how people would receive the word from the scriptures. And uh, they receive it so well with a lot of you know, eagerness, with a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm. But it comes later on, as they walk that journey, then they, they begin disobedience and then repercussions uh, follow thereafter. And so there's this story in Exodus chapter number 24 from verse 3 and 8. It says, So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said, we will do. Did you hear that? It says, all the words which the Lord has said, we will do. They received the word with a lot of eagerness and also enthusiasm. And then it, it continues and say, And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, verse 5, Then he sent young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half the blood and put it in basins, and half the blood sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said, we will do. They repeat the same again. All that the Lord has said, we will do. And be obedient. Actually, they're even adding the word obedience. They say, all that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. So if you continue with that story, you realize after they had said that they will obey, later on, disobedience uh, begins to creep in. And that is why many of the children of Israel were able to suffer and even die 
in the desert. Many of them never crossed the promised land just because of disobedience. Uh, the same uh, story, you can get it on Exodus chapter number 19, verse 7 to 9. We are not going to read that. You're going to read that on your own. Now, these were some of the things that the Lord would want them. You know, he'd give them a word. And remember, it was written down. They would actually read them on scrolls, on stones, on tablets of stones. But there's something that the Lord speaks in Jeremiah chapter number 31 and verse 33. He says, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds, in their minds, and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So when the Lord has come to a place where now he's not giving us his commands through stones, he's now putting his laws and his instructions and his commands in our hearts, then... That means we are always instructed on a daily basis. The Holy Spirit will lead us. The Holy Spirit of God will always lead us, will always minister to us, will always give us guidance of the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. And now the Lord will expect us to obey fully that which the Lord has told us to do. And now we realize that uh, those are some of the uh, challenges that children of Israel were able to face just because they never paid attention to that which they received firsthand. Now, we're going to look at some of the ways on which we can be able to sustain obedience. And number one, one of the ways on which we can be able to sustain obedience is don't delay the instructions. When the Lord has said something, has commanded you to do something, don't delay doing it. Because once you delay doing it, then disobedience creeps in. And probably you might end up not doing exactly what the Lord had told you to do. Um, there is this parable of two sons in Matthew chapter number 21, verse 28 to 31. Uh, it says, but what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not go. But afterwards he regretted it, and he went. Then he came to the second and said likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. And then the question in the, at the end of that parable is, which of the two did the will of his father? One said, I will go, but he never went. Another one said, I will not, but he regretted it later, and he went. Now, the one who said, I will go, but he never went, probably there was delay, probably there was just a refusal, just direct disobedience. Probably it was just, um, you know, the hardness of the heart. And he refused to go. So the Lord is calling us to not to delay when he's giving us that instruction or that command. He expects you to obey and go and do it. So once you are able to just go and do that which the Lord has told you at that instance that you receive that word, then it becomes easier for you to be able to do that. And then number two is we, come, we have to come to that place where we ask God to help us to deal with doubts because doubt is also one of the instruments that the enemy will use for you to, to rebel against God's command because God will tell you to do something and probably in your mind you're thinking like, okay, is this even possible? Is this even achievable? Is this even doable? So once doubt creeps in, then you, you realize that disobedience is just imminent. So we have to come to that place where we ask the Lord to help us deal with any form of doubts in our work with Him. Where then we have to understand that when we are able to deal with doubts, then we are able to do what? To obey God's word and then you'll be able to implement it. So we have to come to that place where any pellet, any kind of creeping in of doubts, we have to be able to deal with them. Then we'll be able to uh, do that which God has told us to do. And then number three, uh, this is very uh, important as well. For us to be able to sustain obedience is we have to ensure that we do not harden our hearts. Do not harden your heart. Anytime you receive God's direction, anytime you receive God's instruction, make sure that you do not harden your heart. 
<laughs> we are going to still in the book of Exodus. We're going to read uh, chapter 8 of Exodus, verse 5 to 10. There is this time when God is telling Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go so that they may worship me. But somehow the Lord releases the hardness of heart towards Pharaoh against the word of Moses. And so when he goes there, Moses tells him that this is what the Lord has said, but Pharaoh refuses. And so God releases plagues in Egypt. And so in this portion of scripture that I just mentioned, Exodus chapter 8, verse 5 to 10, God releases the plague of frogs. What captivated me in this portion of scripture is this. Let us just go and read it. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Everywhere there was frogs. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may sacrifice to their Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, Accept the honor of saying, When I shall intercede for you, for your servant and for your people, to destroy the frogs from you and your house, that they may remain in the rivers only. Verse 10. So he said, Tomorrow. Pharaoh is saying, Tomorrow. And he said, Let it be according to your word, that you may know that there is no other like our Lord God. The whole land is infested with frogs. There are frogs everywhere, in the houses. You know, when you go to your bedroom, they are all over your bed. When you go to the kitchen, they are all over the pots. Every vessel that is used for cooking food, frogs are jumping everywhere. There are some even which have been squashed. You know, they are dying everywhere. There are heaps and heaps of dead frogs which are making the entire land stink. And uh, there's a lot of chaos in the land just because of frogs which are everywhere. But Moses is asking Pharaoh, when do you want me to ask the Lord to remove the frogs from Egypt? And Pharaoh is saying, tomorrow. It's like he's telling Moses, just allow me to have a one night with the frogs. As if it's a good thing. And then, you know, it's interesting because when you read verse 7 of the same portion of scriptures, as the frogs are coming all over the land of Egypt, it's like Pharaoh now is calling for the magicians to perform the same thing. Now he's increasing even to the number of frogs. You just see what the hardness of heart can do. So we have to come to that place where we are able to deal with the hardness of our hearts. And I believe it's in, uh, in the book of Hebrews where it says, Today when you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So we have to ensure that we are able to deal with the hardness of heart. Because a broken and a contrite spirit, the Lord will not despise. We have to come to that place where we are able to break our hearts before the Lord. So that when you receive a word or an instruction, you are able to follow it to the latter. So hardness of heart is not a good thing. All right. And then uh, probably last but not least, number four, do not forget his benefits. How we are able to sustain obedience, do not forget his benefits. Because once you've understood what the Lord has achieved in your life, the capability that he has to make your life change, to make your life better, then every time the Lord speaks, you will remember the goodness that he has done in your life and then you're able to obey what he has told you to do. But if you keep on forgetting, he has given you life he has given you everything that pertains to godliness and also life, then if you forget that, it's very easy for you to disobey that which he is telling you to do. So we have to come to that place where we do not forget the benefits that he has given us. Uh, there's this portion of scripture in Psalms 103. Uh, of course, from verse 1, it talks about uh, bless the Lord, all my soul, uh, and all that is within me, bless the Lord. And from verse 3, it talks about do not forget his benefits. Down to uh, verse 18, this is what uh, it says. To such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments and to do them. 
So we have to come to that place where we remember the thing that the Lord has, has blessed us with. So we have to ensure that we do not forget the goodness of the Lord in, upon our lives. We have to understand that he has done a lot in our lives. And if someone has achieved so much for you, then when he speak, you are able to obey. So let's come to that place where we do not forget. And it is in the tendency of every human being to forget. But we have to come to that place where we are reminded in our spirits every time and every moment that the Lord has done so much in our lives. And when we do that, then it's good for us to remember that, that we'll be able not to forget that which he has told us to do. And then lastly, let's complete the assignment. Once the Lord has told you to do something, ensure that you carry it to the detail. Because um, there's this story of Saul in Second Samuel. We just mentioned it when we were starting. Second uh, Samuel chapter 15. And of course, um, somewhere there, it talks about him being sent to destroy the Amalekites. The instruction was to destroy everything. That is both man and woman, cattle, uh, uh, every livestock, every infant, everything that was in that land of Amalekites. But so, because he did not, because he did not want to heed to the voice of the Lord, then he chose to pick some goodies out of that land. And he, and he also secured that some, some people from that land, protected them. So he did not carry the task to completion. So once the Lord has given you an instruction, it doesn't matter how it doesn't look good to you, but he expects you to complete it to the detail. And I believe that is one of the challenges that we are facing as, as believers and also as the, as the children of God. Because the Lord will tell you to do something. You either do it uh, half-heartedly or... You don't do it to the, uh, to the detail. You do it partially and you, you know, in your heart you're convinced that at least I have done it. But God wants you to complete that task because 95% obedience is equal to disobedience. So God expects 100% obedience. So we have to ensure that we, we come to that place where we are able to totally obey God, which is a very good thing. So... But just reminded as we as we come to the close of this that we have to hear God well. We have to listen to his voice well. Because sometimes when we allow distortions along the way and these things that we've just shared to come our way, when they creep in, we will walk with blindness that will not be able to see the direction that the Lord is leading us. If we are able to focus on him, then it becomes easier for us to obey. So we have to help ourselves and allow the Spirit of God also to work in us, work in the issues of our heart, work in the issues of our soul that will be able to hear God speak. I believe that has been helpful today and um, I believe you are, so, you, you are going to be so intentional about following God and hearing His voice. And I know in this platform we've also been taught on, on, on uh, hearing God. And so I know it has been helpful as well that when you get to that place where you are hearing God, then if you're hearing God and He's speaking things and you're not following them, you're just attracting issues in your lives. So let us come to that place where we obey God totally and, and wholly. And that will be a, a blessing. So I just want us to wrap it up with a prayer. Father, we want to give you praise and give you honor and give you all the glory because of speaking to us so immensely uh, this moment. Thank you for your word. You're calling us to obedience. You're calling us to follow after your word. You're calling us, oh God, to totally heed to your word that, Lord, we don't, you know, do it half-heartedly, but do it with our whole heart. Many a times, Lord, we obey when you give us your word, but along the way, we choose to go astray. I pray that, Father, you'd help us to sustain obedience in our walk with you as we pursue and as we follow after your, your commands, O oh God. We bless you and we give you praise, O oh God. We pray that, Father, you'll be able to help someone who has had issues in heeding to your word, who has had issues in following after your voice. And probably may, there are many who are struggling even in hearing you, O oh God. We pray that, Lord, we'll be able to open this, uh, the ears of their hearts, that, Lord, they'll be able to hear you, O oh God, when you speak. We bless you and we give you praise. 
We magnify you and we just want to rejoice in your presence. This we pray in agreement in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.